What's going on guys, Bang Lanier coming back at you with another video and today we're going to go ahead and look at the 2016 NFL Draft and potential changes that could have happened. As you can see, um, you know, this is how the 2016 NFL Draft transpired all the way from the number one pick being Jared Goff down to Jermaine Fetty, the offensive guard slash tackle out of A&M who isn't exactly working out for the Seahawks and Jared Goff is kind of, you know, moving into that role now with Sean McVay as the just superstar young head coach out there in LA. But uh, today we are going to look at a video I did last year, not look at the video, but kind of look at changes that could be made to that video in its own video this year. If you're not following, we are doing a 2016 NFL Draft do-over. What if the 2016 NFL Draft could be redrafted? Now, there are a few aspects we have to look at just before we jump in. And one, it's kind of an odd smorgasbord of um you know moves that i would potentially make also what i think the team would do if they had the chance to do it over so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the number one overall pick of the 2016 nfl redraft with the first pick in the 2016 nfl draft the rams selected jared goff a quarterback out of cal and now they are confident in that selection. They're going to stick with Jared Goff in the redraft. Uh, I know Jared Goff didn't exactly have a fantastic rookie season, but now with Sean McVay, that offense is really, really clicking. And whether it's Jared Goff or not, or whether uh, whether a different quarterback would be better suited to that system or a different pick, I feel like the Rams would be very confident in selecting Jared Goff again with the number one overall pick. With the second pick, the Eagles went ahead and selected Carson Wentz, a quarterback out of North Dakota State. And uh, in the 2016 NFL redraft, they are once again going to go ahead and take Carson Wentz, quarterback out of North Dakota State. You could argue about him being the number one overall pick. He's a ton of potential. He's crazy how well he's playing. He is playing lights out right now for the Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, they'd be silly to go another direction at this point with how well he's playing over the past month. So Carson Wentz is still going to be your second overall pick. With the third overall pick, the San Diego Chargers, I guess the Los Angeles Chargers? Um, I think it was the San Diego Chargers at the time, and then they moved after the draft. But they get well, they went ahead and selected Joey Bosa, defensive end out of Ohio State. And in the 2016 NFL redraft, the Chargers are going to go ahead and select still Joey Bosa, defensive end out of Ohio State. He's played phenomenally for the Chargers, including uh, grabbing a defensive rookie of the year award last year. Absolutely crazy season for him last year, and he's just continuing to do it. Very, very good player. He was supposed to be the number one overall pick in the draft for so long leading up. And um, he ended up slipping for whatever reason. And I, I say slipping, he only moved down to three. But yes, the Chargers do go ahead and select Joey Bosa again. In the 2016 NFL Draft, the Cowboys selected Ezekiel Elliott with the fourth pick. And they're going to go ahead and select running back out of the Ohio State University Ezekiel Elliott why not he had such a good season last year had so many rushing yards behind that offensive line was in my opinion snubbed for an offensive rookie of the year award they gave it to his teammate Dak Prescott so I know so far the first four picks all remain the same but if it ain't broken you know don't fix it if it ain't broke don't fix it you guys probably heard that expression before but yeah top four picks this is a better draft than usual you go to some of these you check out the 2013 NFL draft which will be a video on my channel if you guys like this sort of thing because it will get a little bit crazier here in a moment if you guys like this sort of thing be sure to subscribe as we're going to be doing 2015 2014 2013 2012 all those redrafts are already done just have to make the videos so we're having a lot of fun here but let's go ahead and get into the number five overall selection with the Jacksonville Jaguars the Jags went ahead and selected Jalen Ramsey there was a lot of talk that the Cowboys could have done that but just like in real life, um, they go ahead and pass, take Ezekiel Elliott, which frees up the Jaguars to take Jalen Ramsey, cornerback slash safety out of Florida State. Of course, he only plays cornerback now, and he is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Forget about young cornerbacks. You know, we got into it a little bit with AJ Green this past week as of recording this. But yeah, he's playing a phenomenal grade on pro football folks. I think the third best of any cornerback in the NFL. And uh, yeah, Jalen Ramsey's absolutely killing it, playing so well. He's extremely flamboyant, a lot of question marks around him, but no question marks about his play in the field. Jaguars, I'm assuming if they had the fifth overall pick, they would do the exact same and take Jalen Ramsey again. 
The Ravens at number six took Ronnie Stanley, an offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. And in the redraft, they will stay true to that selection and take Ronnie Stanley, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. I know nothing has changed so far, but when all of these teams have drafted so well, and all of these players have turned out into the players they were supposed to be, and in some cases even better. It's like, you're not going to change and just take a different player. So, of course, the Ravens do take Ronnie Stanley. And um, I don't know, will a pick ever change in this draft? We'll see. At number seven, the 49ers would select DeForest Buckner, a 3-4 defensive end, 4-3 defensive tackle. You could probably even play him defensive tackle in a 3-4, but he's playing, of course, defensive tackle in the 4-3 right now for the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, will they go ahead and take him again with the seventh overall pick in the redraft? They will select DeForest Buckner in the 2016 NFL redraft defensive tackle out of Oregon. He has played so, so well this year. It is unbelievable. He's one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL. He's playing a phenomenal grade on pro football focus. He is absolutely killing it for the 49ers as they do have a lot of bright pieces on that defense that could be good for a long time. You look at Ruben Foster, Jaquiski Tart before injury this year is playing really well, but we're not going to overshadow DeForest Buckner, who has just played so incredibly well for the 49ers. They're not changing a thing. With the number eight pick, the Tennessee Titans traded up in front of the Giants and Bears to select Jock Conklin, an offensive tackle uh, out of Michigan State. And in the 2016 NFL redraft, they are going to select Jack Conklin. <laughs> I haven't changed anything yet. I see no reason to. That's the thing. I promise you guys, stick around. There will be changes made. This is a redraft. This isn't just, you know, reciting who was picked in which spot. We're going to assume that the Titans do go ahead and trade up again, making everything the way that it was. And they do take Jack Conklin. He played so, so well last year. I think he was like a top three rated tackle in the NFL on Pro Football Focus in his first year. And he's playing decently again in his second year. So, I mean, the Titans aren't gonna change anything. Jack Conklin, again, goes to the Titans at number eight. With the ninth pick, the Bears traded with the Buccaneers. Bucks had the nine pick, they traded back. Bears had the pick, they moved up ahead of the Giants to go ahead and select Leonard Floyd, a pass rusher out of Georgia. And then in the 2016 NFL redraft, the Bears go ahead and take Leonard Floyd. <laughs> outside linebacker he's a pass rusher we're just going to call him an edge rusher out of georgia i see no reason why they would change this um he had such a good season last year in a few games i think he had seven and a half sacks in 12 games uh and he has like six and a half in 10 so far nine eight something like that um anyway he's having a pretty good season again and i see no reason why the bears would change he has a bunch of potential and uh yeah the top nine all have been identical to the actual draft. Although, at number 10, my favorite NFL team, the New York Giants, went ahead and selected Eli Apple. If you guys remember my Eli Apple reaction video, I was not too pleased about this. And um, he had a really, really awful season last year. This season, he's been better recently, but still way too many penalties. He's been beaten way too much. I promise you, it's finally changing. The Giants do not take Eli Apple again. The Giants go ahead and select Laramie Tunsil, offensive lineman out of Ole Miss. They're playing him at left tackle. If you guys remember, before the gas mask bong video, <laughs> Laramie Tunsil was the projected number one overall pick for months, months and months out of Ole Miss. He's supposed to be a franchise cornerstone on the offensive line at left tackle. And um, the New York Giants, that's just what they need, an upgrade over Eric Flowers their new franchise offensive lineman to protect Eli Manning to get that running game going. The Giants take Larmy Tunsil out of Ole Miss. Finally an offensive lineman who's actually who's good. He's been he's been good for the Dolphins so far. I would not be surprised if the Giants would go back and do this if they could. With the 11th pick, the Bucks would go ahead and select Vernon Hargraves, a cornerback out of Florida. I loved him at Florida so much and uh, he just hasn't played that well in the NFL so far. Uh, to what you'd expect of a top 11 pick. And I think he has the potential to be a very good player, but um, I will spoil it. The Buccaneers will go a different direction. You guys are going to start to see this as some of these picks don't pan out as much and uh, different players are going to be selected. But the Bucks go ahead and select Kendall Fuller, a cornerback out of Virginia Tech. He's played very, very well this season. I think he has one of the top... Uh, it might be actually the top 11 grades at cornerback in the NFL and pro football focus. He's been 
very, very good overall, rebounding from a pretty poor season last year, but he's been really, really good this year. And um, I think with the ability that he's showcasing in this season, the Bucks would not hesitate in taking him, you know, helping out at that cornerback position, this time with a different option in Kendall Fuller out of Virginia Tech. At number 12, the Saints would select defensive tackle Sheldon Rankins out of Louisville. And in the redraft, they go ahead and select Sheldon Rankins, defensive tackle out of Louisville. He's played very well so far. He was injured a lot of last year, but he came back and rebounded and was very, very good. He's been very good this year. I see no reason why the Saints would uh, mix it up at all and uh, kind of get that defensive line going around Cam Jordan with an interior pass rusher in Sheldon Rankins. Very, very good player. Yeah, I see no reason why the Saints would mix it up. At number 13, though, the Dolphins would take Laramie Tunsil, left tackle out of Ole Miss, but he's no longer on the board. As I had him going to the Giants at number 10 in the redraft. And uh, in this redraft, they're going to go ahead and select Deion Jones, inside linebacker out of LSU. Just played so well for the Falcons last year. Uh, the Dolphins have kind of been looking for that big defensive piece in the middle to build around. They thought maybe they were going to get it with Kiko Alonso. Um, after uh, he won offense, or excuse me, defense rookie of the year with the Bills, he hasn't really ever developed in anything. But Deion Jones had an incredible season last year for the Falcons. He's such a good player, and I see no reason why the Dolphins would pass on him. And uh, yeah, they're going to take him at number 13 in this redraft. At number 14, the Raiders would go ahead and select Carl Joseph, a safety out of West Virginia. I think he was a four-year starter, not a four-year starter, but he started as a freshman at West Virginia. He's just 22 years old, and I mean, if you're sensing a trend here in the redraft, they're going to go ahead and stick with their selection of Carl Joseph. Very, very good player, and in the box safety, who with some coverability, tackles really well, hits really hard. Carl Joseph is that dude. And yeah, the Raiders go ahead and take him again in this redraft. Now we get to a very, very interesting pick, and that is going to be with the Cleveland Browns, that dumpster fire of an organization they've been over the past several years. But uh, hopefully in this redraft, they looked to change that they took Corey Coleman at 15, who was having a pretty good rookie season before injury, and then he went ahead and got injured again to start this year, if I'm not mistaken. So they're going to go ahead and change up this pick. And in the redraft, they're going to go ahead and select Tyreek Hill, a wide receiver out of West Alabama. Has just been so explosive for the Kansas City Chiefs, either returning punts and kicks for touchdowns or even acting as a receiver, getting a ton of catches, yards, taking handoffs in the backfield. He really is a Swiss Army knife. You can use him anywhere on the field at any time. I wouldn't even be surprised if, you know, one time the Chiefs had said, you know, hey, go play safety, go play cornerback, do something for us with your athleticism. And um, I feel like he would do it pretty well. Maybe not defense, but like he can pretty much do anything. The Browns kind of wanted that, I feel like, with Jabril Peppers in this past draft. But Tyreek Hill is just, you know, faster, more explosive, debatably more athletic. And uh, he's that playmaker that the Browns have been looking for to hopefully turn their franchise around. At number 16, the Lions would go ahead and select Taylor Decker, an offensive lineman out of Ohio State. They've been playing him at... I think it was right tackle for a little while, and then they just plugged him in at left tackle. And he was so, so good before injury. He's been injured for a lot of this year. Um, but yeah, the Lions are going to go ahead and make that same exact decision. You got to protect Matthew Stafford. If Matthew Stafford is your franchise quarterback, you got to protect him. Taylor Decker has done a phenomenal job of doing exactly that. The Lions make the same exact pick and take Taylor Decker again. With the 17th pick, the Falcons would select Keanu Neal, a safety out of Florida. And he just played very well in his rookie season as well. So in the redraft, the Falcons are going to go ahead and select Keanu Neal, safety out of Florida. Just a player who has played so well so far in his young career. He's only 22, had a phenomenal rookie campaign, as did Deion Jones, another fellow Falcon. Deion Jones was drafted a little bit ahead of him in this redraft, uh, even though it happened in the exact opposite order. Um, well, not exact opposite. He wasn't taking three picks after four picks, whatever it was. Deion Jones was a second or maybe early third round selection. I think it was third round. But yeah, Falcons do manage to hold on to Keanu Neal, even though they can't hold on to Deion Jones. They are extremely happy to retain him on their roster. With the 18th pick, the Colts would go ahead and select Ryan Kelly, a center out of Alabama. And he had a pretty good season last year. It wasn't incredible. And then he's pretty much fallen off this year. And you do have to protect Andrew Luck. Um, 
but sometimes when there are playmakers on the board, you just got to go ahead and select them to be your franchise guys. So that's what the Colts do in this redraft. As they're going to go ahead and select Jordan Howard, a running back out of Indiana. I feel like he also played at UAB, I want to say. Is that, is that a thing that happened? I feel like it was. I think he transferred to Indiana. Anyway, regardless, Jordan Howard burst onto the scene with the Bears last year. You know, rushed for a number of yards, was a, a, you know, a severe weapon for the Bears, despite them not having an offensive line really at all. So Jordan Howard shows that he can do it. He's going to take pressure off Andrew Luck if Andrew Luck ever gets back on the field. But yeah, Jordan Howard over Ryan Kelly in this redraft. At number 19, the Buffalo Bills would go ahead and select Shaq Lawson, a defensive end out of Clemson. And he has played decently well uh, in what minimal time he's had. He's been injured a lot, though. I think the Bills are going to go ahead and change this pick. And they are going to change it to none other than Yannick Ngakwe, a pass rusher out of Maryland. has been severely overlooked in the draft on the Jags, been maybe outshined by Dante Fowler, who was drafted earlier, earlier than him, even though Yannick Ngakwe has put up debatably better numbers. Not even debatably, it's a fact. He has. Yannick Ngakwe has performed so, so well. He's only 22 years old. The Bills take the pass rusher that they really want. Uh, Shaq Lawson just is not that guy for them right now. I think Yannick Ngakwe is a little bit better of a pick with the way he's played so far. With the 20th overall pick in the draft, the Jets went ahead and selected Darren Lee, an outside linebacker out of Ohio State, ran a blazing fast 40. If I remember, it was like 4.49, 4.48, something insane. But uh, he has faced injury, and he also hasn't played extremely well when he's been in. Jets are gonna go ahead and change up this pick as well. And they're going to select Dak Prescott, quarterback out of Mississippi State. I bet you guys were wondering when Dak Prescott was going to show up. I felt like the rest of the teams didn't really need a quarterback. And I feel like with Dak's abilities, I feel like it would make sense for the Jets to go ahead and select him at number 20. He's played pretty well so far in the NFL. I do have my opinions about him. Uh, and I think that he is a little bit overrated with the system that he plays in, with who's around him, and his actual on-field abilities. I think he forces the ball a little bit too much. But... We're going to see how he does by himself on the Jets. And um, yeah, Jets go ahead and potentially take their franchise quarterback to build around. Dak Prescott is headed to New York. With the 21st pick in the draft, the Texans went ahead and selected the speedy receiver out of Notre Dame in Will Fuller. And now, I'm not exactly that high on Will Fuller. I think the best thing that he does clearly is run quickly, <laughs> run fast. Very fast player, catches way too much with his body. However... He has like so many touchdowns this year. It's just crazy. He doesn't even have that many catches, but he just finds a way to get open in the end zone. And either Deshaun Watson or Tom Savage have just been finding him in that end zone, throwing him the ball. So I see no reason why the Texans would change this pick. And of course, Will F Fuller is that guy. I just had a really poor transition in there. Yeah, <laughs> Texans go ahead and select Will Fuller again in this redraft. With the 22nd pick, the Redskins would select Josh Doxson, a wide receiver out of TCU. And now Josh Doxson has started to play well. He's a guy that I was high on coming out of college. I think that he was well worth the first round pick. I think he's going to develop into that player. However, right now he's not. I think there's a better position or a better player that the Redskins could take in this position that maybe be a little bit more beneficial to them. And that guy is going to be Michael Thomas, a wide receiver out of Ohio State. Now, I know a wide receiver just went off the board. I think Michael Thomas is leaps and bounds better than Will Fuller, but I just don't see um, the Texans taking Michael Thomas when Will Fuller's on the board. I think they go with the same move. And Michael Thomas falls right into the Redskins' hands and a very, very good player. Another guy that was slept on in the draft was taken in the second round, uh, but just absolutely dominated with Drew Brees in his rookie season. Is coming back, is playing pretty well again so far. And at just 24 years of age, he's going to come in and be that Redskins franchise receiver that they can't really find because it's not Terrell Pryor. It's not Jamison Crowder. It might be Josh Doxson, but uh, they're going to go ahead and select Michael Thomas here at the end of the first round or near the end of it. Now, another receiver was drafted. Three straight wide receivers in the draft. The Vikings selected Laquan Treadwell, wide receiver out of Mississippi. In my opinion, I think he was the best receiver in college football prior to viciously, I think, tearing his ACL or broken he had some kind of vicious leg injury i don't recall exactly what it was um but he just hasn't really been the same player since hasn't done much for the vikings despite being in i think a position to succeed 
so the Vikings are going to go ahead and change this selection. And the Vikings take Sterling Shepard, a wide receiver out of Oklahoma, so three receivers do go in a row. And um, it's Will Fuller to the Texans, just like it was, but the Redskins, of course, took Michael Thomas, and now the Vikings with Sterling Shepard, someone I think is going to fit in really, really well with Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. Sterling Shepard has been so good for the Giants, and as a Giants fan, it pains me to see him go elsewhere. But uh, yeah, I think he's more than worthy of a first round pick. He's 5'10", but he plays way bigger than that. Very, very good player out of Oklahoma. He's been phenomenal for the Giants so far. I think statistically, he's the, either the first or second best slot receiver in the NFL based on yards in the slot since 2016, since he was drafted. And he's just been phenomenal. Vikings get themselves a steal, as they did a few years ago with Stefan Diggs. But yeah, now Sterling Shepard does end up falling to them in the first round, and their receiving core is dominant. With the 24th pick in the draft, the Bengals would go ahead and select William Jackson, cornerback out of Houston. And then 2016 NFL redraft, the Bengals go ahead and select William Jackson, the third cornerback out of Houston, was injured, I believe, all of last year. But since coming back healthy, he's played very well for the Bengals so far. He, I believe, was my number one graded cornerback in this draft um, out of college. He was just so, so good. And uh, yeah, I feel like the Bengals would not pass on taking him again. A guy with just so much potential, ideal size, speed, cover abilities. William Jackson's an absolute beast, and I think it's only a matter of time before he breaks out into the scene. I think the Bengals will know that, and the Bengals will take him again in the redraft. With the 25th pick, though, the Steelers were on the clock, and they selected a cornerback. Maybe not the cornerback they wanted. Maybe they wanted a William Jackson, but they did end up taking Artie Burns, cornerback out of Miami. And in the redraft, in the draft do-over, they go ahead and select Artie Burns, cornerback out of Miami. He's played well enough. He hasn't exactly been dominant, but he's played, I think, pretty well, especially for uh, where he was drafted. And I think the Steelers would do it all over again if they had the opportunity. At number 26, though, the Broncos would trade with the Seahawks to get that 26 overall selection and trade up for their quarterback. Their franchise guy in Paxton Lynch, only one problem. Trevor Simeon currently starts over him. They're not playing their first round pick. He wasn't supposed to be a first round pick. The Broncos made a force reach for a QB in order to solidify their franchise and get them back to the Super Bowl. Paxton Lynch was never gonna be that guy. Um, he was never gonna replace the dominant beast that was Brock Osweiler. Peyton Manning was all right, too. But yeah, we're going to go ahead up and change this pick. Uh, and the Broncos end up selecting in the draft do-over. Justin Simmons, a safety out of BC. I think he's played very well in the NFL so far. He's a player that currently plays on the Broncos. But I think with how well he's played and how well he fits that no-fly zone and how you know athletic, how well the Broncos like him... Um, they're going to take the same exact pick here, or not the same exact, they're going to take a player that they would take later, but uh, yeah, they do end up grabbing him here. They need to take him in the first round in order to get him. Justin Simmons stays in the no-fly zone, stays with the Broncos. Broncos are forced to take a first round pick in order to get him. With the 27th pick in the draft, the Packers would select Kenny Clark a defensive tackle out of UCLA. And Kenny Clark has played, I think, very well so far in his short time in the league. But uh, let's see who they go ahead and take in the redraft. Chris Jones, a defensive lineman. He's pretty much a defensive tackle. I think he fits this scheme so well uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Chris Jones is an absolute beast. I was very, very close to, again, going with Kenny Clark. I think Kenny Clark is a very, very good player. I think Chris Jones is just a little bit better and I think it's a travesty that Chris Jones was not a first round pick. And uh, the Packers go ahead and take him in the first round. And maybe they'll come back, trade up for Kenny Clark later. Kenny Clark, very good player. I think Chris Jones just a little bit better. I think he fits the scheme very well. And I think that's who the Packers take at number 27, 26, something like that. At number 28, though, the 49ers would select Josh Garnett, an offensive lineman out of Stanford. And in the 2016 NFL draft do over, the 49ers go ahead and select Hunter Henry, a tight end out of Arkansas. He's been so good so far in, um, I would say, I don't want to say minimal opportunities with the Chargers, but the Chargers are still sticking it out with Antonio Gates. Hunter Henry has still found a way to get yards, still found a way to get touchdowns. Very, very talented player, very well-rounded. 
And yeah, the 49ers take that franchise tight end that they haven't had since Vernon Davis over an offensive lineman. They still have needs on the offensive line. They just take the playmaker when they can find one. Hunter Henry is the pick in the redraft. With the 30th overall pick though, the Cardinals would select Robert Kemdichie. The Patriots had the 29th pick, which was forfeited. So this technically is, I guess, uh, the 29th pick. However, the Cardinals would select Robert Kemdichie, a defensive lineman out of Mississippi, Mississippi, Ole Miss. Someone with so much talent and just is so lazy, has never lived up to his immense talent, like controller dropped. However, I don't think the Cardinals would take Robert Kemdichie given the opportunity again. Do they go a de different defensive lineman? Kenny Clark's on the board? Potential. The Cardinals go ahead and select Miles Jack, a linebacker out of UCLA. Amazingly talented player here. Can just do so much for you. Tremendously talented athlete. Um, very good cover linebacker. He fits really, really well into what the Cardinals have going there um, with those just super athletic linebackers. In the 2017 NFL Draft when they took Hassan Reddick, which technically doesn't exist at this moment in our you know fabricated time because we are back in 2016 after the season doing a redraft, Hassan Reddick is still playing at Temple, uh, but I think Miles Jack is someone that compares favorably to him in terms of athleticism. I think they have different abilities. Miles Jack is kind of a cover guy. Hassan Reddick can really go after the quarterback. That's one of his main strengths. But Miles Jack, tremendous playmaker, uh, tremendous player. And I think the Cardinals go ahead and select Miles Jack over a defensive lineman in the redraft. With the 31st overall pick, the Panthers would go ahead and select Vernon Butler, a defensive lineman out of Louisiana Tech. And in the 2016 NFL draft, do over a redraft, the Panthers go ahead and select Kevin Byard, a safety out of Middle Tennessee State. I was trying to figure out a place for Kevin Byard over the entire draft. He's been playing so, so well, but I'm like, not that the other players have been necessarily way better than him, as Kevin Byard is having an absolutely breakout season. He's just played so well. I think this was the spot that made the most sense for him. I think the other players ahead of him just made more sense for the teams. And at the time, what the team needs were, they didn't need a safety in Kevin Byard. You could argue that the Broncos did. However, you know, with Darian Stewart, maybe they didn't. They ended up taking Justin Simmons, who just fits in so well and would end up being their starting free safety. I think Kevin Byard to the Panthers makes a ton of sense. Very young, talented player. You can kind of take the place over a Kirk Coleman type player. Um, I think he fits in really well with their scheme. Kevin Byard goes to the Panthers. I think one of the most talented players in this draft falls all the way to the second to last pick in the first round. Pretty crazy, I know. It's just what ended up happening. And wrapping things up here, the Seahawks would go ahead and select Jermaine Effetti, an offensive guard out of Texas A&M. And in the 2016 NFL Draft do-over, the Seahawks go ahead and select Michael Pierce, a defensive tackle, really a nose tackle, out of Samford. You see a lot of really talented players coming out of the draft in Samford over the past couple of years. Uh, in Jaquiski Tart, who plays for the 49ers, in a, uh, well, we were just there with the Panthers, and I'm blanking on his name right now. It's James Bradbury. I'm going up to look. It's James Bradbury. Yeah, there it is. I, I just, I blanked until I went actually to it. Um, but yeah, the Seahawks would go ahead and select Michael Pierce, someone that went undrafted and snakes his way to the back of the first round. The Seahawks got that defensive lineman they've been looking for. Keep in mind, Sheldon Richardson isn't on the team at the time. Neither is Malik McDowell. So Michael Pierce just slides in so perfectly into the Seahawks system becomes a dominant defensive lineman, dominant run stuffer for them. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up this first round in the redraft. I thought about doing the first pick in the second round because um, the Patriots didn't get the pick here. However, didn't end up doing that. This was the complete first round in the redraft. I hope you guys enjoyed. This took a lot of time for me to assemble, so I really hope you guys do like it. And if you do, maybe hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. I'm going to do more of these types of videos. Let me know what are some good ideas to do down in the comment section below, and maybe I'll do them. You will, of course, get credit if I haven't thought of it already myself, but thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.